Welcome to the Crimson Engine. Welcome to the new studio. Today we're going to be checking out a short film, science fiction short film, uh, a shot on the lake in my backyard a couple of weeks ago using some interesting uh, fixtures that I haven't shot with before from Cream Source and generally experimenting with uh, what you can do in the outdoors uh, with some lights when you're lighting big areas of space at night in the snow. So let's dive in. So I'll play through a couple of clips of the final edit. Here we have our actor on the snow, a little bit of flare from the backlight there. She brings up her tracking device. We see a low angle. We see her arrive um, at the location she's going to, clears off an area, get a couple of different shots of that. We get coverage, low angle, see her face. She chips away at the ice with a crowbar, exploding ice shots, maybe too many. Then the light turns green. She finds this crystal amongst the broken ice that she's looking for. Stands up, inspects her crystal, and then the light's cut out. And we get this overhead UFO sort of effect with the ice and snow blowing around. That's my favorite shot. And then we cut to black. So we shot this in around three hours. Call time was five. We set up, we started shooting uh, when it got dark at about 6.30. Uh, we shot from six to nine and it took us an hour to get everything back up off the lake um, into the cars. You see here, uh, the only real VFX, well, I have two shots that are VFX. This one is because by the time we got to shoot this, we had you know, footprints everywhere and keeping footprints out of shot on a snow shoot is absolute nightmare. So I removed them in um, Photoshop and I would have been fine to leave it at that, except that right at the end, when she starts to kneel down, I pan slightly. I had to use uh, match moving to this, do this subtle shift at the end of the clip. The other one was a lot easier. It is just the hole where the light was. If I, I think I can turn that off. There it is. There's the, uh, I just chopped it out. If you turn it off here, the light on its boom. And what I did was just cut that out and put a duplicate of it behind it and moved it up slightly. So the trees from that one match the other. Now I had some storyboards or uh, I used satellite, my favorite 3D rendering uh, photography app to make boards for this. But as you can see, I originally conceived there being two actors in this scene. The reason being, it's always a great storytelling device to have two people in a scene so that their interactions can help the audience know the significance of things. But uh, this being rural Vermont, it was very difficult to find one actor, let alone two. So we went with one and, and it worked great for what it was. So let's jump over to the BTS. You see us here at Last Light uh, discussing where we're going to put things. That's Michael the gaffer. And as you can see, we're already starting to make tracks in the snow. Then we had to get everything down from the house where we parked. Uh, I can't overestimate how critical it is to be able to park your car or your vans as close as possible to where you were shooting because everything has to be carried back and forth, back and forth. Once when you are starting up to get to set, um, which takes a lot of energy and it can sort of like wipe you out before you've even started shooting. And a second time when you have to wrap and take it all back when you're absolutely exhausted. So every step, every step counts. We set up a six by six frame. Um, this was going to be our key light. It was going to be essentially, you see it here in the, this, this reflection on her face, this key light. This is a, uh, a one by one running off a generator, which we'll have a look at soon. But the four by four is all of this stuff here, the key light on her face and Looking back, we could have moved it further off axis, but we were constantly moving her around to try and find fresh snow because every take that she was chipping away, every take that she was cleaning the snow off, we needed fresh snow. So we're constantly moving her around. Uh, and so in some of the takes, um, it's more frontal than I would have liked it to be. And I used uh, cream sauce uh, vortex lights for all of this, the two by one, the, it's called the Vortex 8, the Vortex 4 as our key light bounced into the six by, um, and then the micros, which you'll see later in the snow itself, 
um, to give that uh, color illumination. But here we have a six by ultra bounce. It's just on a single combo stand um, angled into the snow, angled up vortex four with its cover on, uh, with its diffusion. The vortexes have a variety of different diffusion from this little bulbous thing to uh, straight and it has two pockets where you can put diffusion so you can actually double up the diffusion on the light, much like you would put two layers of diffusion in a map box. The great thing about these lights is that they're waterproof. You even see them at um, NAB in a little tank of water being rained on. Uh, you can have them in snow like we had and the snow can melt on them and doesn't cause them a problem, which is makes it perfect for this application. Then we had a second uh, Vortex 4 uh, on a triple riser. So it has one, two, three levels it can go up. And uh, these ra this ran off a, a putt-putt generator. Um, this is the Honda 2200, which we rented for the day. It was 60 bucks, including the fuel. And that meant we were able to get this far away from uh, our subject and put it up high as though it were the moonlight. Um, but it, I think when I actually watch it back, it comes off more like um, the light of a snowmobile or uh, some kind of city over here. Um, and personally, I prefer it. If this was all evenly illuminated, it would be a lot less dramatic. So uh, now that I see this, I actually really really like it. I, at the time I was worried that it would look not like moonlight at all, but uh, now that we shot it, I think it looks great. So we had this, the the triple riser all the way up um, to give that high angle. Here I am putting on my ProAIM camera stabilizer, uh, which I used pretty much for the whole shoot. Uh, I like it because it means you can get low angles and high angles and it doesn't physically tire you out. So it helps you sort of stay creative and stay thinking without, you know, thinking the whole time about how much your back hurts. Uh, it also meant that I could get a ton of different angles that I normally wouldn't have been able to get handheld uh, with the C500 Mark II. I think I was on a 35 mil pretty much the entire night. Uh, I think at the end I changed to 24, but I used the C500 and, and just punched in on the frame, meaning I went from the full frame mode to the Super 35 mode, uh, basically instead of changing lenses, which when you're in an environment where it's sometimes it was really snowing uh, you don't really want to expose the sensor if you don't have to and if you do you want to go under coverage and this let me you know swap around really quickly i was getting uh kathleen the actress to stay within her previous footsteps so she wouldn't make another track She's checking her phone michael's bouncing uh the light back into her face uh, because we're too far from the um we're too far from the six by to actually get any level from that so he's just got a piece of poly He's holding it um, in order to get the shot where she's looking up. And you can see the ping in her eye, which is kind of passing as the phone. We tried turning the phone to white and turning the brightness all the way up. But at the level I had it, um, it wasn't doing anything at all. One regret is that I didn't capture more of this actual snow. It looks great in the BTS because uh, it's backlit. Uh, Liam got a better angle than I did. Uh, but the snow kind of came and went and came and went all night. And it wasn't really... Uh, consistent enough um, for me to catch it when I wanted it. Uh, so this is the over the shoulder. Um, I had her lean, actually kneel down because I couldn't, without getting on a ladder, which I did later, I couldn't get high enough to shoot over her shoulder and get her POV on the phone. So I just had her kneel down to the snow to get that. Some more low angle stuff, some more following stuff, though um, I didn't use any of it in the edit. It was, it, it was too bumpy, um, especially on the snow and the unevenness to it had any kind of tracking shot. Here we are using the micros face down in the ice so that as she uncovered them, she got that that cool green, green blue return. And we, we tried different options of like dimming them up, dimming them down, uncovering them. If you want to get an effect, you've got to try different ways uh, of achieving it. Um, you all can't always know beforehand what's going to work. These were the cream sauce micros face down, covered in snow. Not something I would do to a normal light. Um, we were running these off source power, so we didn't have to worry about batteries. We've got the, the micros down into the snow and Michael's helping uh, with the polyboard again to get that return. This is the final kind of alien abduction scene. Uh, we just had the triple riser again with this boom arm with the micro on the end of it. Uh, and the cream source have this little uh, remote controller. So rather than messing around with your phone and trying to get connection and messing around with Bluetooth, you just plug it straight in and it's got a, you know, 15, 20 foot cable that you can then change colors with, dim up, dim down. And so that's how I used, I used the, 
uh, the wide remote to trigger it. We had the uh, kind of honeycomb uh, grid uh, on the micro to get that contained beam. We probably only had it 15 feet high, but it, and then uh, Michael just used an electric leaf blower uh, to, we made a little pile of the fresh powder and he was like blowing into it um, to create that to create that cool vortex of snow. Uh, if we'd had two or three of these, we could have made an absolute uh, snowstorm, uh, but we were limited with crew and uh, one worked great. This is the shot, the low shot, and the camera ended up absolutely getting covered in snow. And this is the high shot, so it's her POV of the uh, alien ship. You can see we have four big sandbags on the triple riser. Um, it's also weighted with a boa bag on the end of the boom. It's boomed, I think it is boomed all the way out. So it's like eight feet out. And I'm standing on the third rung of this ladder. And for pretty low technology, right? There's no crazy camera cranes. It really is just, you know, a guy standing on the third step of a ladder to get her eyes. And you can tell she's blinking like crazy. So you see in this shot, the whole background uh, is lit with a more moonlighty look. That is the Vortex 8, the 2x1, which is up on the balcony of the house, pointing down and giving this great moonlight effect. I would have loved to have another one uh, up here on this mountain, um, backlighting all of this. Uh, it wouldn't have really broken the lighting continuity. It just would have given me much more information. Uh, but it was going to be quite a trek and running a lot of cables. And it really is just one shot. As a cinematographer, you absolutely want that. But as a director, uh, for three seconds, four seconds of, uh, of footage and make a call to go with what is important for the story, not what is technically correct. Plus I'm happy to have it in the last shot rather than the first shot because that's what you leave the audience with. That's the breakdown of our fun little science fiction shoot. It isn't really a film in itself, but uh, it was a test and lead into a larger project I wanna do in those same similar conditions. And is nothing like doing a short shoot um, to test out both the gear that you're going to use, the conditions you're going to use it in, and how you're going to translate what you think you're going to get to what you actually get. Uh, a little shoot like this is you know, absolutely essential. I'm going to do a more complete breakdown of this whole project on CanonMasterclass.com. I have over 30 courses on it, including camera guides for the whole Canon cinema range, cinematography, lighting, post-production, all that stuff. Check it out at Canon Masterclass. Thank you very much for watching. You can see the gear in the description. I will see you next time. Thank you.